All right, good morning, guys. Uh, we're going to work on some mobility for your handstand. So we're going to do some shoulder opening. Uh, we're also going to work on your straddle pike and out active compression. Uh, we're going to start with our shoulders, though. So you're going to want to have a weight. You're going to be holding it over your head. So you want to go a little bit lighter with it because we want to be able to have our arms straight, shoulder down. And we're going to be moving up and down from here. So I've got three kilos. I probably wouldn't go any heavier than seven, to be honest. Uh, just make sure that if it is too heavy, we're not bringing our hand down here yet. The aim is to get your shoulders as open as possible. Okay. You're also going to want a foam roller as well. And then our last one, so we've got the foam roller. We are also going to use the same weight. So let's start with our thoracic first. You're going to lie on your foam roller. You're going to place it around about mid back, possibly higher, depending on how flexible your back is. And then you can either go bent knees or straight knees, but just making sure that your pelvis is tucked under. So we're not bananaing through my lower back. Hands are going to go behind your ears. Try and open your chest up. So pulling the elbows down to the floor. And then you're going to see how far you can arch back. You're going to hold. And then you're going to come back to your starting position. And we're going to do 10 of these. Okay. So this is one. Remember, each time you go back, we're trying to not use our lower back. So this needs to stay tucked under. And then we're going back to hollow. And two. And hollow. Three. Four. Five. And six.
seven. And eight. Nine. Keep your bum tucked. And one more time. Ten. Bring over. And then back to hollow. Cool. We're then going to grab our weight. You're going to take it over your head. And I'm holding it like that so that my hands are externally rotated. So try not to hold it in the middle. You're going to have your arms straight. The roll is going to stay in the exact same place. And you're going to, again, have your tailbone tucked under. This time we're going to keep our chest hollow as well. So you're in a dish. And then you're going to half that weight over your head. We're going to go to a closed shoulder position first. So you are using strength to pull the weight forward, but we're not here because we are stacked. It's obviously not going to be hard. So we're going to hold that for five seconds. And then after the five seconds, we're going to go into an open shoulder position, keeping the ribs in for five. And then back to here. And we're going to do that three times. So starting with a closed shoulder, Three, two, one, and then opening it up. Three, two, one, and then back to a closed position. And open. And closed. Last one. Okay. The third exercise, you're going to come up to standing. And this is the one where we're going to go overhead. So starting with your shoulder down, you've got space between your ear and your shoulder. Push the weight back and then you're going to try to cover your ear as best as you can. And then back down to here. And we're going to go one, push it up, make sure not leaning over to the side and back down. Two, and down, keep the ribs in, using the other hand to check, three, and down, four, and down, last one, five, and back down, good, other side, no worries, Michael, see ya, and one, reaching up, and down, two, down, three, four, one more time, five. All right, we are going to go back to the first exercise. So that was round one. I'm going to try and complete two more sets. So again, foam roller goes to your thoracic, tailbone is tucked under. Knees are either straight or bent, and we're going to try and arch back. So this is one, and two, three, four. Six, seven, so I'm taking my time with this as well, eight, so I'm still tucking this under. Nine. And last one, 10. Okay, taking the weight, tailbone tucked. Again, you can keep the legs straight if you like. We're gonna go closed position first. Five, four, three, two, one and then open. Five, four, three, two, 
one and close make sure the elbows stay locked three two one and close open sorry five four three two one and closed five four three two one and open Keep the ribs in elbows straight and relax and then we're going up to standing Keep together ribs in again use the other hand to check and start over your head there's space between your ear and your shoulder and then we're going to lift up as high as you can push the weight back and then back to a depressed position and two and back three and back four and back last one five and back good changing sides and one two three four and five okay very last round grab the roller again Elbow tucked and arching back one. Two. Three. Four. Five, six, seven, and squeeze your shoulder blades together. Eight, you want to go nine. And last one, ten. Okay. And again with the weight. So remember, externally rotated hands. Hollow chest, tailbone tucked under. We're going to close the shoulders so you should just be able to see your biceps in your vision. Three, two, one. And then we're going to open it up. Three, two, one. One and again, close it off. Three, two, one. Open it up. Five, four, three, two, one. Last one, close it off. Five, four, three, two, one. And last one, letting it go. Keep the chest in. Five, four, three, two, and one. Letting it go. And then we're going up to standing. Grab the weight, feet together, using the other hand to make sure our chest is in and starting passive. So I've got space between my shoulder and my ear and then I'm gonna close that off, reach up as high as you can, keep the chest in, keep the weight back and then relax. The arms straight though, two, Three, four, I love that you can just see Dex's pom pom. <laughs> Last one, five, and changing sides. Oh, there you go. And one, two, Three, 
beautiful. And last one, five. Okay, for the next little trio of exercises, we are going to work on warming up our legs for some straddle. And we're gonna continue with our back extension. So you're gonna need a block for your back. Uh, you can also use this for your pigeon. Otherwise, continue using your foam roller for both of them. And then I've got a box. If you do not have a box, you can use a couple of stools or a couple of chairs will work. Just make sure they're sturdy because you're gonna be standing on them. And then having a weight. So we're gonna work on some wide Jefferson curls. That is going about double shoulder width apart with the feet, keeping the knees straight. Rolling down as low as you can. The weight's going to help pull you down a little bit further. And then we are lifting ourselves back up. Okay. We're going to start with our pigeon though. So with the pigeon, we're going to work on PNF, which means contract and relax. I'm going to use the foam roller, but feel free to use the block. And what I'm going to do, so the higher the surface that you're putting your knee on, the easier this is going to be. So if your pigeon, so if this position is not quite your best friend yet, feel free to go a little bit higher with, how, with what your knee is on. But essentially we wanna make sure that our front foot is in line or slightly in front of the knee. We're gonna be resting on the back knee so that can stay on the ground. Feel free to grab blocks to use for your hands. And this is the position we want to start in. So knee on the ground, my front knee is on the foam roller, my foot is in line with that knee. I'm also trying to roll my opposite hip down. So my right hip, right knee is on the block, my left hip is trying to roll to the ground so my hips are square. And then, block on the other side. We are going to do repetitions of pushing that front knee as hard as we can into the block in front of us. So you gotta squeeze your butt. And then we re when you relax, you're going to try and sink your hips to the floor, okay? We are going to do seven. Chest stays up nice and tall. And we are pushing. So this is one. And then relax. Keep squaring the hips off, so don't let that hip turn the other way. And two, when we're active, I'm trying to go light in the hands. And then relax. Should be able to go a little bit lower. Three, pushing, and relax. Four, push, and relax. Five, and relax. Six, and relax. We're gonna do one more. Seven, pushing, and relax. Okay, change sides. And try and do the same thing. The knee goes on the roller, making sure my front foot is in line with that knee. One side might feel a little bit worse than the other, and that's okay. All right. Ready. So back knee's on the ground, chest is up nice and tall, and I'm pushing this knee into the block. This is one, and then relax. And two, relax, I'm trying to roll my right hip down to the floor. Three, relax, four, and relax. Five, relax, six, relax, and last one, seven, and relax. Okay, so giving that a rest, we're gonna go to our block or chairs. Weight is up to you. You can go quite heavy with this one because we're only gonna do five repetitions. But you want to have a weight that is heavy enough to pull you down to your max range. You should be able to pull it back up with control, okay? So starting at the top, my feet are on the edges of the block. 
Thumb squeezing, knees stay straight the whole time. We're going to start with my head. So I'm going to roll my head down and then go all the way through my spine. I'm going to get to the bottom, trying to tilt my hips back when I get to about here. And then tuck your bum under. And you're going to roll back up. Okay? You also get as low as you get. And two. And the aim is to get our belly button or our belly on our thighs. And three. Four. And last one, five. Try and get the hips over your feet rather than behind them. Back up. And then we're going to go to a third exercise. You can use the roller or a block for this one. You're going to go against the wall. And I'm going to place the block about there on my thoracic. And it's going that way rather than flat against the wall. And obviously, if you want to make it harder, you can go like that as well. But I'm going to sit here. I'm going to tuck my tailbone under so my spine is flat against the block. And I'm going to go over my head. I'm going to try to keep my biceps touching my ear the whole time and see if I can touch the wall. Same rules apply when we did our foam roller extensions. I'm trying to keep my lower back out of it. So I got to keep it tucked. And I'm just using from the ribs up to get back. So hands externally rotated and one. You might not get to the wall and that's okay. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six, seven, eight, nine, and last one, ten. Okay, so those are our three exercises. Again, we're going to get three sets in. Need the block. So we're going to go back to the first one. So with the roller again, going into our pigeon. Make sure you've just got the knee on whatever you're using and it's not sitting on your leg like that. Wait, you won't get as much of a stretch. All right, so my hips are square. My knees on the block, chest is up, and then we're pushing down, and then relax. Two, relax, three, and relax. Feel free to keep your hands on the floor when you're active, or only if it feels okay. Will we take the hands off? Five. Six, seven, and we're changing sides. All right, chest up, and one push, and relax. Two, three, four, five, six, and last one, seven, pushing, and relax. Okay, back to the block.
So five of our wide diffs and curls. Straight knees, roll down, and one, two, three, Give it a go, four, and last one, five. Okay. Grabbing the block. The lower down you place it, the easier it will be. Make sure it's not too easy though. All right, bum tucked. Hands going over your head. And one. Two. Three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and last one, ten. All right, one more set. Back to our pigeon, and then we're going to move on to some straddle work. Okay, chest is up, and we're pushing. One, and relax. Two, three. Four and five, six, last one, seven. Good, and changing sides. The knee on, press up. And one, two, three, four, five, six, one more time, and seven. Cool. Over to the block. Straight knees and curling down. And back up. Two. Three. Four. One, five. And then grabbing your block or your foam roller against the wall. Tailbone is tucked the whole time. Try and cover your ears. And one, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, last one, ten. Okay, we're going to move on. The next bit of equipment you're going to need, either a band, probably a little bit thicker than this if you have one, or a couple of kettlebells. Ideally, you want them lighter than eight kilos. So probably four, six, uh, even lighter than that would be good. We are going to start with this one. So, if you're using the band, you're going to wrap it around your waist, exactly where you'd put a belt, and then you're going to take it over the top of your thighs, and then it goes onto your feet. And I would try to make sure that the band isn't twisted, because it's going to start digging into your feet after a while. Once you've gotten here, you're then going to light back, this way, and then straighten your legs. Now, ideally, we want to have our feet in line with our hips, or slightly forward, so you're in more of a pancake, not back here, okay? So if you are unable to get that little tilt, you can grab your foam roller, And when you're here, you can even use a pillow. Just something that's going to sit underneath your tailbone just to raise you up a little bit. And then the exercise from here is to squeeze your ankles together and then going back down to your straddle position and going between those movements. Okay? Now, if you are using the band, you're going to be doing 20 repetitions of it because it's quite light. Alternative number two, if you do have kettlebells that are the same, or oh, hello, you woken up, you're going to start in a pike, you're going to place your foot in the kettlebell, like so. Again, make sure your feet are in line and then you're going to try to go down with the weight and the weight's going to help pull your legs down even further. Same rules apply. We don't want our feet back here. Try to keep it in line or again slightly in, for in front and then we're going to squeeze the weights back together. Okay? So that is exercise number one. If you are doing it with the kettlebells, we are just going to go for eight repetitions because it is a little bit harder. I'm going to start with this. This will be one. Coming down. I'm going to hold at the bottom. If your kettlebells are slightly too heavy for you, you can use your fingers to assist you on the way up. Just make sure you are in control of it the whole time. And two. And squeeze back up. Three. And back up. Try to keep the legs externally rotated so the heels are touching, not the toes. Four. And up. Five. Hmm. Satisfying. Ooh. And again. Oh yeah, blacksmith. Nice. <laughs> Actually, I remember in England, because they obviously had the remnants from all of that still, you go on field trips where you'd go and make a spoon, something like that. You'd be the, the one like, yeah. 
All right, just be careful when you're coming out of this. Don't want cowbells on our face. Second one, you've got two options for this. If you are working on your handstands, uh, we're gonna do some wall, chest to wall tuck slides. Uh, if you are not, or if you are new to it and you're not comfortable doing chest to wall, there is a floor variation that we're gonna do. I will start with the chest to wall one first. So, facing away from the wall that you're gonna be on, make sure you've got nothing around you. Obviously, you're gonna be keeping it. As you come down, you're gonna walk to the wall. Obviously, the closer you are to the wall, the harder it's going to be. You want to find your handstand shape. Make sure you're externally rotating your arms and then slide the knees down as far as you can and then sliding back up. If I was a little bit further away, it would be a little bit easier. And then back up. Okay. Uh, make sure you're returning to your handstand shape as well in between each rep. Oh, shoulders like that. The second one, so this is your alternative. You're lying on the floor. You're going to have your hands, so the backs of your hands on the ground, like so. You're going to try to imagine that you have something underneath your lower back you've got to crush it so you've got to tuck your bum under and push your lower back into the floor so keeping the ribs in keeping this shape you're going to see if you can straighten your legs you might not be able to if i straighten mine then i lose that shape so i'm just going to go about here the whole time try to push my arms to the floor and then back to a tuck going straight and then back, okay? That is option number two. So if you're going into the chest wall, I would go for about three to five reps, depending on where you're at. Uh, with the floor one, we're gonna do 10. So I'll do this one, and then we're gonna go back to the kettlebells or the band, okay? So we are here, ducking, and then going to straight. And then back. Two. Three. Try and keep the knees together as well. Four. Five. Six. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay, and then grabbing your kettlebells or your band, and we're going to go into this one. This will be set two. Okay, turn out, and one. Two, remember if you're doing this with the band, you're gonna be doing 20 reps, not eight. Three. Four. Five, six, seven. Again, as you fatigue, feel free to use your hands to assist you. Eight. 
Last one, eight. Okay. So back to either the wall tuck downs or on the ground. So when it's tucked and one. Two, three, four, and push your lower back into the floor, five, We're also trying to get our elbows down as well, six, seven, Eight, nine, and last one, ten. All right, going into set three. Heels together and one. Up two and up three. Four. Six. Seven. And last one, eight. And taking the weights off. Hands overhead. And straighten. Two. Three. Four. I'm going to push my arms to the floor as well. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. One more time, and ten. All right. How am I feeling? I'm doing good. Getting, getting that straddle. Probably the worst position. Straddle. We're actually going to hold it now. We're going to do two minutes uh, in your straddle. You can grab some blocks. You can also grab a stool. Yeah, please. Otherwise, my two, second, two minutes will be two seconds. <laughs> oh, from the UK. Representing. We are... Yeah. 
Maybe it's good you don't have a mic sometimes. <laughs> okay. When you... <laughs> uh, we're going to hold this position here. So if you are not low enough to be able to get your hands on the floor, let's say we're about here, but our hamstrings are not feeling great. You can either come to your hands, or you can even raise yourself up. We are holding for two minutes. Try to stay active. The quads are squeezing tight the whole time. We're trying to sink, so it's a little bit counterintuitive. We're trying to relax into it, but we're still active. Um, by active, I mean you're still in control of it. You're not just flopping down to the floor. If you are blessed with a flat straddle, you are obviously going to put your feet on blocks and make it a bit harder, okay? So, Gary, two minutes. No. Okay. <laughs> It's so cold. You have a cold. Mm -mm. That's not good. I think like cold is one of the things that I can't handle. Like the house that we're living in has one of the old ones. And there's no insulation. Like, it's not double glaze or anything. And having a shower hurts. It's so cold. It's like, do I smell or do I suffer? Of course, we have a shower. Not nice. It really is. I'm, <laughs> I'm an in and out person. I can't be in there for too long. I turn into a prune. And Matt's like in there for half an hour. Like, what are you doing? What are you doing in there? <laughs> He's just contemplating life. I need, I just do everything and then get out and get in clothes as quickly as possible. <laughs> oh. Okay. Knees together. Counter stretch. Some internal rotation. So just tapping the knee to the floor. And then have a rest. It must be. He does do it. I was like, what are you doing? Like, I'm just thinking. <laughs> what are you thinking about? Can you do it not in the shower? <laughs> Shut I get that. That's a girl thing, though. Matt doesn't like baths. We don't actually have a bath, but if we did, I'd be in it. <laughs> Less, less water wastage. Then you can share water, have a kid. Actually, the thought of sharing water with my brother it was like, no. I'd usually go in first. Yeah, you have a bath. Oh, if only adults can have bath toys. Oh, that sounds weird. <laughs> rubber duck. Actually, my friend has a rubber duck in a bath. Really cute. I think the owner. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that is the end of the class. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Hopefully, it helps with your handstands. 
Um, this is the kind of stuff you want to do regularly that's going to help you. It's not too high intensity, so you can do it a couple of times a week and it's not going to hinder your other training too much. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Yeah? <laughs> All right, Dexter needs a walk. Oh, she's turned off the mic. Scanner.